Well, I mean, first in my thoughts for as a skier, just as we were coming over, I just kind of was remembering so many times when I've flown from the United States to Europe over Greenland and looked out the window and just thought, oh man, I would love to just drop down there, land and go skiing here. And coming here was like doing that. There was a big influx in tourism to Svalbard just because people were interested in seeing polar bears or seeing the melting glaciers and that ironically that that tourism was maybe having a negative impact. There's peaks everywhere but the, the landscape is, the distances are much greater than they look and big long flat valleys so the access is a little bit difficult. The most common form of access is, of course, snowmobiles, and we were really intrigued by just the concept of using dog sleds as a non-mechanized form of access. My name is Karl Wotwick, and uh, mainly dog driver. Well, we are running what we call an ecotourism company, and we are certified as an ecotourism company. Uh, we do that because we are concerned for the environment around us and want to take care of it for coming generations. The Wattwigs and Svavak Wimmer Center, you know, they come from dog sledding. That's their, their main business. The main question for us was how can we use the dog sled as some kind of taxi for skiers to approach a mountain. We were really intrigued by the concept of using dogs as for access in the Vatvik family. Apparently they had never really considered that before as a thing that they could offer. When we brought it up to them, they realized that right behind the huts that they own, there's beautiful peaks that they could take us to. And even once we skied the peaks right near the hut, that they could just quickly take us across the flats to another peak and drop us off for the day. Yeah, the mountaineering and skiing part here, it's um, a bit like, feeling a bit like an explorer. Yeah, you pick those peaks and probably you're the first one who's actually walking up that peak with skis and skiing it down. You just look for the best line to get down and um, if it was good you just walk up again. It's just so so unique, such a unique experience. It's hard to imagine un unless you really experience it yourself. Don't, don't worry that you're gonna be on a crowded place where someone else is gonna take your line <laughs> because it's definitely not, not gonna happen. The only one who maybe tracked the, the slope before you was an ice bear that rolled down on his butt and checked for us actually if there's avalanche risk or not. Because there is no night, the sun doesn't set really. Most of our tour started at around midday or one or two o'clock in, in the afternoon and we made the summit around, I don't know, nine-ish, ten o'clock in the evening. So the light was magnificent. I mean, Svalbard gives you a perfect 
perfect terrain for kiting because you don't have any obstacles, there is nothing that can come in the way. You have snow everywhere, which is important for snow kiting, of course, which is a big problem in the places where we come from because there's always a street, a tree, an electricity line or whatever that takes you in here. You can just start your kite and go on for hours and hours and hours. The fjords are just huge. It's so much fun and you can go so fast. So I actually just kept on going and going towards the sun. It was really nice sunlight. And uh, yeah, I got a, a little bit in trouble for that because I was just too far off. to have Carl be able to tell us about the history of the area, tell us about some of the competing uh, uses going on in the area like the skidoos um, or the dog sledding. I think he had a very good perspective on how to continue to develop this area but in a sustainable way. Yeah, he definitely is really concerned about this place. So he's eager to fight for sustainable tourism and um, kind of promote his way of traveling through those beautiful islands here. One of the things that I, that I really didn't know before coming and talking to the Vafix was just their concern that, I mean, you, when you think of the Arctic, you don't think it needs a wilderness area. But they clearly had strong concerns that the rapid increase in tourism in the last five or six years, and mostly snowmobile tours, that they felt like that was a, a real threat to the wilderness experience on the island. And it really didn't occur to me that you would need to fight for a wilderness area in the Arctic. a great time. I think Telemark Zone is doing a good job of trying to promote sustainable development up here with the likes of Carl. So come and support the cause and experience a really super place. Mm -hmm.